So should Christians read Harry Potter? Hi, I'm Carla with Race to Walk. Thanks for joining me. And today, that's what we're going to be talking about. Before we get started, a little bit about this channel. Here we share good thoughts about good words. And on Fridays, I host a live Bible study on Instagram at Race to Walk. And then I publish two videos a week. I publish a replay of that Bible study with some studies as well as a video about books. So if you are interested in either of those things, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with some friends, and also hit the bell for notifications so you can get updates about new videos. So should Christians read Harry Potter or watch the movies? So I didn't read Harry Potter until this last summer. I was actually working on um, a recommendation list of young adult authors, and I asked some of my friends from the apologetics program, authors that they recommended. One of my friends recommended Harry Potter. And I was like, really? And she said, oh yeah, it's an apologist's dream. And I was like, oh, interesting. Because again, I had never read the books. When the books came out, I was not a young adult. And also I didn't have kids. And so it just really wasn't even something that was on my radar. I did see a lot of the uproar about the books and the popularity of the books from different uh, segments of the church. A lot of people thought it was horrible, should not, that Christians shouldn't read it, that it was witchcraft and of the devil and, you know, that it was a no. But again, it just wasn't even something that was on my list of things to read. And um, I did watch a couple of the movies when I had kids, but never read the books. This summer, my friend Anne was doing a read through of the Harry Potter series, and it was through the faith and culture class at her church. And since we're all, you know, stay at home orders, they were offering it online. So I thought, okay, Cool. This would be a good opportunity to go through it. If you ever have a chance to go through that class with her, I highly recommend it. I will link to her website. We would read a book a week. She would go through the themes, through the symbolism that are embedded in the book. And I didn't know this. J.K. Rowling, uh, undergraduate degree, was in the classics. All that symbolism and allusions are in intentional. They were intentionally worked into the series. If you've only seen the movies, I don't think that this symbolism is as obvious, but there are a lot of Christian themes in the books. So we're just going to walk through this. So Harry Potter is um, a series of books, and it's about a, an orphan named Harry who is staying with his aunt and uncle who don't treat him well, and he discovers he has some abilities that they don't, and his parents had also had these same abilities, and he's taken to a school to be able to um, develop and train those skills. And there is evil that has to be fought. So sometimes evil is external and obvious, and other times it comes from personal conflict. One of the things that I've heard some people say about Harry Potter as, you know, just him as a character. In some of the books, he's um, more dishonest. He, he rebels against authority, and they don't always think that he's a great example as a character. So the thing about that to remember is that the Harry's arc as a character is not just in a single book. It's through the whole series. And so he starts with a very unhappy home life. He is in an abusive situation, and so he doesn't have a good relationship with his aunt, uh, aunt Nichols, and he does not have anybody that he can trust. Everybody is against him and mistreats him, and then he's taken into a place where he has friends and he has people that care about him. He's not immediately able to even respond to that. It takes some development before he's able to trust other people. It starts with friends and he's able to trust authority figures. I think the thing that is important to remember about that is one of the reasons that family is so important is that, that our family and the love that we experience in our family enables us to not only trust other people and show love to other people, but it also enables us to be able to experience God's love and trust God. So if that trust is broken in the family, it affects all of our relationships. It affects our relationships with other people, and it also affects our relationship with God. And I think that's, that's important to remember. So I don't necessarily think that that's a huge issue. I think that, you know, if you're only reading one of the books, you may see it that way. But I don't, I think if you read the whole series, I think you kind of, you see that, that arc of his story where he comes from, you know, uh, being abused and, you know, having a lot of bitterness and resentment to coming to a place where he can forgive other people, show mercy, and there can be uh, some reconciliation.
So then let's just go to the story as a whole. I think that in a lot of ways, we as a culture have lost the ability to imagine. So some of it is there's a lot of books out there that don't really challenge us that much. I think that part of it is also the uh, the movies that we have now are so realistic that it almost inhibits our imagination. I've seen people comment about a movie and rather than looking at the story and what it's saying, it's looking at like how well the the CGI is or, you know, they, they'll criticize it if they can tell it's not real. Okay, it's a movie. It's not real. It's not real. You know, at least when I was young and we had like the early Star Wars movies or the Clash of the Titans, they were cheesy. But, you know, at least it gave us some room for our imagination to fill in the blanks, right? And so when you're reading these stories, you know, a lot of times you, you should be able to see the picture in your mind of the th- the thing that you, of the story that's being told. A lot of times that's not really true anymore. I've noticed this with a lot of books. Uh, they're almost written like they're written for a screenplay. Rather than giving the imagination room to work, it's just a quick fix of adrenaline. I think that's one thing. The Harry Potter is a very imaginative story and it creates this whole world that is similar to ours, but not quite. It's, it's a little bit different. Now, when I did one of my first reviews on this earlier, there was a lady that mentioned that her daughter read the books and that she got so immersed in it that they had to see a counselor to kind of bring her out of that. But, you know, I think that can be true of anything. I've noticed that like Pokemon is kind of like that. People kind of lost themselves in it. So yeah, you do need to use discretion and discernment in any reading. But I think that part of it is you can put yourself in a story and experience it. But then I think it's also good to learn to step out of it and evaluate it. So looking at the elements of the stories and seeing, okay, what is it really saying or what parallels can we draw from this? I think that would help keep from just sinking into it and not seeing it as anything more than just an experience and distinguishing that truth from fiction. Also, just with stories themselves, um, I actually wrote an an essay for the spring 2019 issue of an unexpected journal on imagination about how imagination is a part of faith. There are people in the world that are just naturalists. They don't believe in anything beyond what they see and beyond this world. And our profession of faith as Christians is that there is more than just what we see. That not only is there a God that loves us and has a plan for us, an unseen God, but that there's also you know, a another unseen world out there that has an evil that is determined to, to seek our harm. That was the first thing that I noticed about this. Harry's aunt and uncle are like those naturalists. They don't believe in anything beyond what they see, right? This world of magic is really an analogy for the world of the spirit. There is more than just us. And we're in this culture that's so resistant to anything beyond the natural, right? And, and even sometimes people may believe in spirit, but not a God that we're accountable to. But in Harry Potter, there is this idea of more. There is more than. And there's a very strong message of there being a good and an evil, and that you can have the ability to do something and misuse that ability. And I think that those are good things. That those are, when you read the books, there is a very... Um, strong emphasis on community, on uh, not giving up, on fighting for a cause, on caring for others. And those are all really good things. And I think that part of what I see in the generation that grew up on Harry Potter, there is this, this real strong sense of community, more than in the older generations where we have so many people now that are only in it for themselves. It's this younger generation that has this idea of, yes, we we are community and we need to care for each other. And I really think that these books have had a big part of that formation. That really is what the books are about. So the next thing, I think maybe one of the biggest issues people have is the people who have magical abilities are actually called witches and warlocks, right? And so there are these labels. And in the Bible, it says that you shall not suffer a witch to live. It talks about that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And so there's a very strong statements against witchcraft in the Bible. And I think that's where the big issue Christians have with it comes from. So I, I just want to kind of point out what witchcraft is. So witchcraft is really about manipulation and control. It's about taking your will and forcing it on others. It's the absolute opposite of trusting in God and trusting in his will and try to enforce your own, right? So the reality is 
that you can be practicing witchcraft in a lot of different ways. It has nothing to do with what we think of as spells. You can be operating in witchcraft by being domineering and trying to enforce your will at work. You can be operating in witchcraft in the church by using and distorting biblical doctrine to try to dominate and manipulate and coerce other people. That's witchcraft and that oppression and manipulation and control. There's a lot of people that operate in that. Let's look at the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, people would go to prophets to get a word from God right? That was one of the ways that they were from God. There were certain people that heard from God. Not everybody did. We, this was before the cross, before the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit was external. It wasn't internal. But that wasn't the only way they did it. They also had the unum and the thurum, which was like some sort of divining device. They would cast lots to determine God's will in a certain situation. So it really wasn't the method so much as it was who they were asking. So when they use went to the prophets or they went to use those methods of divining is they were asking direction. They weren't seeking out their own will. They were asking God. But the warning is in the Old Testament is you're not to seek advice from the dead. You're not supposed to go to these other mediums. You're supposed to go to God alone, not to these other sources. I would have to say, I think that the Star Wars idea of the force would probably be more concerning than I would a look at the magic in Harry Potter. The, the magic's more like, I would say almost like electricity or something that you're ta- that's there that you're tapping into, not necessarily a, a personal sort of entity or it, it's just, it's just different. It's just like something that's there. Not really, um, I, I wouldn't really connect it with any sort of like pagan belief. It's just different. There's also not a sense of God or even like a, a formal religion so much in the Harry Potter series, there is a very strong presence of good and evil. Not the personal good and evil, but there is good and evil. And there is an accountability and a judgment for following evil. And some people may have a problem with that. I just have to say it doesn't really concern me more than it does like the Lord of the Rings. I know some people have issues with that too, but if you're going to create a fictional world, it's almost safer to do it as J.K. Rowling did and kind of not address it because beyond the good and evil, there's the presence of God in that there's a presence of the character of God in the books, but not the person, if that makes sense. Explaining who God is, is just hard in general. I think maybe it was a good thing to just kind of leave that out. In George MacDonald's essay on faith and the proof of the unseen, he talks about how you, you can't really explain God because if you could explain him or prove him, that's implying that you can get all the way around him and understand the whole thing. And you just can't. You can't. Like God is beyond our understanding. We can understand aspects of him. And I think certain of those aspects are present in the books, but not the personal God. This is the other thing. I've seen people say that there's like literal spells in, in the books. And like there are like these four more warlocks or something and it was the same spells or something. And I'm thinking, have they read them? I mean, okay, so I've never been involved in witchcraft, so I can't say firsthand, but when I was reading the Harry Potter books, I had all those things in the back of my mind. And so I was watching very carefully. Okay, so the words that they use in the books for spells or to do things are literally just words in Latin or Latinish. Sometimes they're kind of tweaked a little bit. So you're saying that speaking in Latin is witchcraft? I mean, what the heck? I mean, seriously, like ridiculous. I say things are ridiculous all the time. Do, am I practicing witchcraft? Is that a spell? I mean, some of the things are like light in Latin. What? I, I have a hard time believing that somebody have actually read the books and I mean, it's just somebody speaking in Latin. Is that witchcraft? I don't, I don't even understand that. Or in the book where, I'm trying to remember which one it was, but when Harry first says the expected Patrona, I would expect the help of the father. I don't understand where that's even coming from. It's Latin. It's Latin. I really don't know what people are getting riled up about that part of it. Maybe it's that they're Calvinists and it's too close to word of faith form or something. I don't know. I would not have any concerns about reading through the books and coming across spells. It would be kind of fun to go through and read through the books and then research the, the Latin that it comes from and how they're used. That would be a fun thing to go through, I think. The one thing I love about the books, I really love the ending. I love the way it ends. 
I love the redemption in it. And it's like uh, Tolkien's new catastrophe, the unexpected good end. You know, there's so much sacrifice in it. All these kids who have had their own giftings, who've come into their own, and they all work together. I love it. I love the ending. It's so good. So should Christians read Harry Potter? I think you should. It's a huge part of the language of our culture, you know, Harry Potter references. Um, and you know what? I spent almost all of 2020 um, in my Bible studies on the parables of Jesus. As we found in a lot of those parables, that it wasn't a Hebraic story. It wasn't a story that Jesus just came up with on his own. He was referring to common stories in the culture, sometimes Greek culture. Some of his parables are actually Aesop's fables reworked. He was using the language of his culture, which included those very well-known cultural stories. And Harry Potter is one of those in our culture today. So yeah, I think you should. I think you should know how to talk to somebody who really loves Harry Potter and to highlight the things that parallel the Christian faith, the, the things that they love about Harry Potter, the goodness and the, the beauty are really aspects of God and his character. And the arc of the story of Harry Potter is really the arc of God's story for us. In my opinion, yes, the answer is yes. So if you have some thoughts on this, for or against, let me know in the comments. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.